This tutorial is a basic introduction to the fundamental tools and principles used to design a printed circuit board or PCB using LTM Designer. The version of LTM used to develop this tutorial is LTM Designer 10. This tutorial assumes the user has experience using Windows-based operating systems. Throughout the tutorials, a left click on the mouse is indicated by an animated red ring spreading out from the mouse pointer. A right click is indicated by an animated dimple push into the screen. This chapter of the tutorial instructs the user in how to use the project environment and schematic editor within LTM Designer. After opening LTM, the user is presented with a home page. One of the most important areas of the screen is the project tab. This is located on the left hand side of the screen. If it is not present or visible, then the user can open it by clicking on the menu bar, View, Workspace Panels, System, Projects. The first important task is to set up a project. In Altium, documents are able to pass information between each other and this simplifies and speeds up the design process. If documents are not in a project structure, then they cannot pass this information between each other and many of the important tools and functions of LTM will not work. When starting a new PCB design project, the user should start with a blank design workspace. The design workspace is used to group multiple PCB projects together and is illustrated using the blank white space in the projects tab. Generally, a single PCB project is used to create one single PCB. If LTM opens with the previous design workspace already loaded, the user should create a new blank design workspace. This is done by clicking on the menu bar, File, New, Design Workspace. Next, add a PCB project to the design workspace by clicking on the Workspace button and selecting Add New Project, PCB Project from the drop-down menu. The PCB project is used to link all the documents together. Typically, a PCB project should have two documents within it, the schematic document and the PCB document. To add a new schematic document to the project, click the project button and select Add New to Project Schematic. To add a new PCB document to the project, click the project button and select Add New to Project PCB. If a PCB is particularly complicated with many different component parts, then more schematic sheets can be added to the project and linked together. A schematic is a drawing representing the functional purpose of the circuit. It describes how the circuit is connected and what function each component performs. A person reading the schematic should be able to understand the function and purpose of the circuit within a few minutes. All open documents are listed as tabs along the top of the main window. Users can switch between open documents by clicking on these tabs. Open documents are also displayed as grey page icons in the projects window and clicking on each document name will change the main display to view the document. It is a good idea to set up the schematic document before placing any components on the sheet. The document options can be edited by clicking on the menu bar, Design Document Options. This window allows the user to change the layout, size, colours, grids, parameters and dimensional units of the document. All components supplied in the Altium libraries are drawn using imperial units and therefore fit an imperial grid system much better than a metric one. The user can add any parameters that they feel would be useful. These parameters can then be displayed on the document to make document control a lot more simple. When the user is satisfied that the document is fully set up, they should click the OK button to return to the schematic document. To add a component or part to the schematic, click on the Place Part button. This brings up a Place Part dialog window. 
The Place Part dialog window stores a list of any recently placed components so the user can quickly add them to the schematic. This is particularly useful for repetitive tasks that require placing many of the same component. Components can be added to this list by selecting them from one of the extensive Altium component libraries. Click the Choose button to open the list of installed libraries. By default, Altium has two main libraries installed, Miscellaneous Devices Integrated Library and Miscellaneous Connectors Integrated Library. There are usually other FPGA libraries installed and other manufacturer-specific component libraries can be downloaded from the LTM website. As an example, the user should select CAP Pole 3 from Miscellaneous Devices Integrated Library and click the OK button. The user is returned to the Place Part dialog window and the component properties are loaded into the fields in the window. Clicking the OK button will return the user to the schematic page and the capacitor will be attached to the mouse cursor. Pressing the space bar on the keyboard will rotate the component by 90 degrees. The user can fully rotate the component using this method. Pressing the Tab key on the keyboard will bring up the component properties. This key can be used to bring up the properties of any item while it is being placed on either the schematic or the PCB document. The user can also zoom in by pressing the Page Up button on the keyboard. Page Down will zoom out. The same functions are controlled by holding down the Control button on the keyboard and scrolling the mouse wheel. Clicking once on the schematic will place a component onto the document. Altium will continue to keep the component attached to the mouse cursor so that the user can add multiple copies of the component onto the schematic if they wish. When the user has finished placing that component, they can simply right click to return to the Place Part dialog window. The user can either select another component from the installed libraries or click the Cancel button to return to the schematic document. This tool is used to place all the components onto the schematic document. If the user wishes to move a component that has already been placed on the schematic, they simply have to click and hold the component and it will drag to wherever that user wishes to place it. While dragging the component, the user can press spacebar to rotate the component or tab to access the component's properties. Releasing the hold of the mouse will fix the component onto the schematic. To access the component's properties once the component has been placed, the user simply has to double click on the component. In the Component Properties window, there are many different parameters that can be changed and even made visible on the schematic document. This is also where the user can select the component footprint associated with the component. This determines what physical shape the component will have when it is placed onto the PCB document. Normally, schematic symbols will have more than one footprint associated with them, especially for components such as resistors or capacitors. The correct footprint must be chosen from the drop-down menu under the section titled Models. Components can be connected together in a number of different ways. The most common and obvious way is to use wires. Wires simply connect one leg of a component directly to the leg of another. Wires are used mostly to show short, unique connections. To place a wire, click the Place Wire tool on the toolbar. The mouse pointer will change to a crosshair cursor with a grey X through the intersection. When the user hovers the cursor over the end of a component leg, the X will change to a red colour. This signifies that an electrical connection is available. Clicking on this connection will commence drawing the wire. By default, Altium attempts to route wires solely in the X and Y directions. Pressing spacebar will change the direction of the wire between starting in the X direction to starting in the Y direction and back again. This is common to both the schematic editor and the PCB editor. Clicking anywhere on the schematic will place a waypoint and the wire will become anchored to that spot. A wire can have as many waypoints as the user desires, but it is best to practice to keep wires as direct and simple as possible. To finish the wire, the user simply needs to click on the leg of another component. The user can also directly connect onto other wires. This creates a junction between the wires signified by a solid dot. If no dot is present, then the wires are not electrically connected.
Even though wires are the most common way to connect components together, it is often not the most neat and organised way. Altium has other methods of connecting components that keep the circuit tidy and also assist with the descriptive nature of the schematic. Power connections are common in a circuit and to use a wire for these connections becomes cluttered very quickly. Altium uses ports to signify a power connection. Click the VCC power port button and a power port connection will attach to the mouse cursor. In a similar fashion to the wire, when the mouse is centered on an electrical connection, the X will turn a red color. This can be on a wire or on the end of a leg of a component. Power ports can be rotated by pressing this spacebar in exactly the same way as any component. When the user has finished placing power ports, right click on the mouse to end placement. Double clicking on a power port allows the user to edit how the power port appears as well as its colour and name. In order for power ports to be connected to the same net, they must all have the exact same name. If a wire is connected to many different components but is not a power port, then using a wire to represent the connection could become confusing and messy. A more efficient method would be to use net names. Like ports, net names can link many different pins together by giving them the same name. Click on the Place Net Label icon in the toolbar and a generic text string will appear on the mouse cursor. In a similar way to power ports, this can be attached to any wire or component pin. Any wires with exactly the same name will be joined together. The actual name of the net can be changed by double clicking on the text string. The user can call the wire any name they wish, but keeping the name as descriptive as possible is highly recommended. There is also a tool palette for drawing shapes and lines on the schematic. This has most of the basic functions included in a drawing program and can be used to provide illustration or comment on the schematic document. Each component on the schematic must have a unique identifier associated with it. This is critically important to Altium as this is the reference name that links the schematic symbol with the footprint on the PCB. When a component is first added to the schematic, it will have a question mark after a descriptive letter as its name. For instance, a capacitor may be called C question mark. Altium has a tool called Annotate Schematics that can be used to automatically give each component a unique name. Click Tools, Annotate Schematics to open the Annotate Schematics window. Each component is listed in this window. The user should click the Update Changes List button and LTM will automatically change the names of the components in the list. This is a list of the proposed changes that LTM intends to make and the list gives the user the chance to preview the names in case there are any specific changes that the user wishes to alter. If the user is satisfied with the names that LTM has produced, they should click the Accept Changes Create ECO button. This opens a further Engineering Change Order window that lists the changes that LTM is about to make. Clicking Execute Changes will instruct LTM to update all the names of the components on the schematic. Close the two windows once this has completed and the user will notice that all the component names have been changed on the schematic. If the user draws a component and then uses it many times within a schematic, it can be extremely frustrating if a mistake is found in the component which requires it to be changed. Another problem that occurs frequently is when the user needs to change the values of a number of components. Altium has a couple of tools that work together to assist with fixing multiple problems relatively quickly. 
The first of these is Find Similar Objects and it is found by right-clicking the object of concern and selecting Find Similar Objects from the resulting menu. This tool is used to select groups of components that have similar properties. Upon clicking Find Similar Objects, a window appears which lists all the parameters associated with that component. There are three columns in the window. The leftmost column is the perimeter name. The middle column is the current value of that component perimeter. The rightmost column contains a field, the value of which the user can choose depending on what similar object they wish to find. For example, if the user wanted to change the value of a group of capacitors from 1 microfarad to 1000 nanofarad, then they would right click on one of the capacitors and choose Find Similar Objects. From the resulting window, they would choose the value perimeter, which has the value 1 microfarad, and change the selector column to same, making sure that select matching, clear existing, mask matching, and run inspector are all selected. The user should press Apply to select the components and then OK to close the Find Similar Objects window. A new window will open listing all the similar parameters shared between the selected components. This new window is the schematic inspector and is used to change the parameters of a group of components all at once. For the example used in the last step, the user should scroll to the value parameter and change the value from 1 microfarad to 1000 nanofarad. When the user clicks away from the window, the value will be updated in all the selected components. When the user has finished editing the components, they should close the schematic inspector. The affected components remain highlighted while the rest of the schematic is masked. To clear the mask, click the clear button in the bottom right of the schematic document window. Now the schematic is complete and fully annotated, the only task left to do is to transfer the components and their interconnections to the PCB. First, check that a PCB document has been added to the project and that all documents are saved to a location on the computer. Also check that the schematic diagram is functionally correct and all connections have been made. Next, click on the menu bar, Design, Update PCB Document Name .pcb doc. A dialog window opens displaying the individual actions that LTM needs to undertake to add the components to the PCB document. This mostly consists of adding the footprints, the connections or nets, and the component classes. An item called a room can be added at this stage. However, this is merely used to group components from different schematic sheets together. It is common practice to deselect this item so no room is added to the PCB. If the user is satisfied with the actions that LTM is about to complete, they should press the Execute Changes button. LTM will add each component to the PCB notifying the user if each step is successful. If a component is not successfully added, it is normally due to a faulty footprint or some complicated reason. If a component is continually not able to be added to the PCB, try removing the component from the schematic and re-adding it. If the problem persists, check the component footprint. If the component was drawn by the user, then check the pin allocations and the connection between the schematic symbol and the footprint to make sure the component has been saved correctly. The user will be automatically transferred to the open PCB document and the components will be visible to the bottom right of the black PCB design space.